Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today I got a game for you that I played yesterday and this is versus a Korean Grandmaster Terran. And I played this game and I actually was very, very happy with the way that this one went um, and the way that I've been approaching Zerg versus Terran lately. Now Zerg versus Terran, very difficult matchup. Um, and what I want to be talking about in this video is the changes that the Liberator has made to the matchup because the Cyclone honestly never gets really played. And I want to be talking about the current state or the current like stage I suppose that we are in in the meta and I gotta say Zerg vs Terran has actually been maturing quite quickly usually what happens early on in every single expansion is that you know people will come up with some sort of cheesy strategy and then it has to basically be patched over and over and over again until it stabilizes to the point where everything is very very nice all around a good example of that was in the last couple of patches where the adept was just a little bit too strong and pretty much all of the you know protos players that have faced on the ladder were going for adept war prism all in so some were doing like two basal ins into a war prism and then eventually get a ton of adepts out and um, it basically causes the matchup to not progress very quickly at all to a point where it's really fun and epic to watch but I've got to say Zerg vs Terran actually feels a lot more exciting than it did in Legacy or than it did in Heart of the Swarm right now already in Legacy of the Void. Um, now what has really changed? For Zerg for the most part the late game is significantly stronger. The reason for that is that there is obviously the Ultralisk and the Adrenal Glands upgrade. Ultralisk now provides extra armor, the Ultra or the Zerklings actually get 40% extra attack speed rather than 18 uh, from the Adrenal Glands upgrade, and it just makes it so that the all-round Zerk army late game is much more powerful. However, the Terran players obviously still got everything they used to, so like standard bio play, uh, bio widow mine, bio siege tank and whatnot is very popular, but I've got a couple of additions. First off, they got the siege tank drops, which I see in about half of the Zerg vs Terran games, so you know, you can now actually drop a siege up tank, so before it actually... Um, you know, uh, before you could not be doing that unless you already had, or actually you could never do that, you could only drop an unseach tank, and right now you can uh, drop a siege tank. Um, but on top of that, you also have the Liberator, and the Liberator has two uh, very distinct functions in Zerg vs Terran right now. Um, basically, you see it as an harassment tool early on. So you will see the um, Terran player go for a tech lap on the starport and actually go ahead and deal damage with that and try and, you know, nuke up. And a couple of the maps are very poorly designed and that strategy is very, very powerful. Um, but on this specific game, my opponent doesn't decide to do that. Uh, but most importantly, what they have as a function late game as well, is deal with the Ultralisk. So the Ultralisk die very, very quickly to the Liberator Siege Mode, and all in all, the matchup has been progressing very quickly to the point where it's now really, really, really fun to play. Now, like I mentioned, we also have Cyclones, we also have Lurkers and whatnot, and those really haven't made their way into the meta yet. I feel like, um, it seems like in both scenarios, you're going to be able to deal with those as either the Terran player or the Zerg player. Um, and maybe we will see those eventually, but right now, it is basically the exact same meta as we see in Heart of the Swarm, except with a bunch of epic changes that make the games, um, generally speaking, last a little bit shorter, but make the battles and whatnot a little more engaging. So I actually really, really like this. So this specific game, I am playing against the Korean Grandmaster Terran. And not me being racist at all, but I am immediately assuming right here, since he's a Terran player, since he's a Grandmaster player, and since he's Korean most and foremost, he's likely gonna play an extremely aggressive style. So what you see me do right here is just play extremely safe. I've been going for quick three bases and I think actually the build that I went for in this game is much 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 better. I go for the safest all-round strategy and a reason for that is the fact that my opponent could very well be going for Liberator um, and with Liberators obviously come the fact that he could be going for Liberator Hellbat, Liberator Hellion, uh, Blue Flame Hellion, Banshee Aggression, Stimpak Timing Pushes. He can go for a ton of different openers and basically all the openers that were viable in Heart of the Swarm are right now also viable in Legacy of the Void. Uh, so as Zerk, it is really your task uh, not just to figure out exactly what he's going for um, but mostly to counter everything. I find the easiest way of dealing with the tons of different aggression that they have right now, you gotta keep in mind they already had like 10 different openers in Heart of the Swarm as far as like aggression goes. Um, right now they have like 6 more because the Liberator just adds on more and more options right here. So I've been playing the super safe all round strategy, going for 4 queens, very slowly tacking up, making sure that I've got my Roach Warren 100% of the games. And in this specific case, you can see my opponent uh, going for a little bit of aggression with Hellpads that we deal with just fine by dealing some aggression. But 
on top of that, he is also gonna go for some Banshee play. And, you know, I um, I end up sniping that Medivac right there because I already had the blind spore crawlers going up. I didn't really scout anything. Uh, but the reason why I put that up is just to be safe. Once again, I'm trying to be safe against everything because it seems like that is the correct approach right now. Now, eventually, I can imagine Terran players starting to abuse this uh, because the fact is that I am trying to be as safe all around, but that also means that I have absolutely no way of dealing aggression to him at all. Uh, you know, I'm playing super, super safe, but I'm not able to actually pressure him in any way whatsoever. Um, now, I did already add on some Ravagers here as well, if he did decide to go for some aggression as well. I already know that he obviously had the um, the armory up, so he could be going for the Liberators as well, if he really wanted to, um, after seeing those Hellbats move in, obviously. Um, and my opponent decided to go for Banshees instead. Now, at this point... Um, I am going to be able to deal with that Banshee relatively fine. I have spotted with my Overlord in the main base, I'm still looking at the minimap as well, I have spotted with my Overlord in his main base that there is definitely a building the size of a command center, so I know he is uh, going to be expanding very shortly as well. And at this point, we have sort of like accepted that the early game aggression is over. I took very minimal losses and lost one worker here in total. And I'm going to go into the mid game right now with a slight advantage. So what exactly has changed in the mid game? Mid game wise, Zerg macro is a lot more difficult, I've noticed. Uh, Zerg macro, obviously, you know, Queen and Jax are still going to be relevant as well, but the, especially the creep spreading is absolutely huge. You can do so much with creep spreading now nowadays that it spreads so much faster than it used to in the past. And obviously, uh, while you're doing all of your other stuff, while you're doing all of your good old macro strategies as well, creep spreading is now so much faster that you need to focus on it so much more often. On top of that, generally speaking, you want the fourth base pretty much right as he takes this uh, takes the third base because it's just gonna be um, you know you're just gonna start falling behind very quickly so I'm still gonna be playing mutaling bane right here um, I actually I'm actually adding on corruptors right now instead of mutalist because that's something we can go over in a little bit as well um, but in general the mid game strategy for zerk is very similar to that of heart of the swarm just a little bit more difficult to control now like I mentioned um, I already have quite a hard time right now keeping up with all the macro aspects uh, while having about 250 APM in these kind of matchups um, so I'm trying to keep up with everything, and ideally I would be going for Mutalisk right now, but I know that I'm gonna have a very hard time keeping up with everything, so instead I'm adding on Corruptors. Now Corruptors can also be used to harassment, or for harassment, obviously they're not as great at that um, as for example uh, Mutalisk are, but I'm still trying to uh, make use of, of uh, the Corruptors because they will kill Metavex very quickly, they will do a lot of damage. But this is a good example right here, right? In Heart of the Swarm, you would not be able to spread this creep until like right around right now, but these creep tumors have been sitting here for like the last 20 seconds. I could be spreading creeps so much more effectively and that is really what I'm focusing on right now. I'm trying to get my macro to the point uh, where I'm actually comfortable doing that before switching into things like Mutalisk and whatnot. Um, on top of that, in general, you do want to expand a lot faster. Obviously, you still gotta not forget about the fact that your opponent could still be going for like a plus one, plus one, or a plus two, plus two um, stim pack timing attack with marines or something like that. So that is something that I'm um, trying to defend here as well. So I am putting Zerklings close to his base to figure out what's going on. Now, Generally speaking, you do want to start making an army right before joining up the fort base. I am assuming right now my opponent will likely be pushing very soon, um, because he already must be producing a lot of army. He's had that third command center for quite some time, so he's been getting a lot of income. Um, and honestly, if I would be able to defend this, I will likely win the game straight up. So I'm just adding on um, as many units as I possibly can right now. I have a units, or I have a Zerking scouting what's happening as well. But finally, I go ahead and spreading that creep. And I don't know exactly how much I've been averaging right now you can see i'm actually getting up to 300 apm at this point in the game um and and that's kind of the reason why i'm still practicing these super passive styles i suppose i don't feel like i'm really good enough right now or i don't feel comfortable enough to really be focusing on my micro and try and do a tens of thousand different ways of harassment i mean i would go ahead and and do overload drops and all these kind of shenanigans but i feel like my macro first has to be on point before doing exactly that now, I saw that he was moving around the map right now with a big army. He is indeed at my fort base right now. There are Widow Mines in his army. He's also dropping behind, so I've split up my army. I'm trying to move forward right here, splitting up the army so I can detonate those Widow Mines to the best of my abilities, making sure that my Zerklings don't die, cleaning up the drop in the back of my third base, using my Queens to pick up the Medivac, and we do manage to clean up at least most of this aggression while keeping the fourth base alive. Uh, so at this point, I have a great time to go ahead and tech up to the Hive. So the idea of the Hive, obviously, is to get that Adrenal Gland going, get that uh, upgrade going for the Ultra Disc as well, and eventually switch into those units. Now, knowing that my opponent already has, um, you know, the option to go for Liberation,
Liberators at this point in the game, I have to keep in mind that I can't just overmake Ultralisk either. I need to keep um, the, the fact up, um, or the fact up that I need, or <laughs> I don't need to keep the fact up. I need to make sure that I um, keep that in mind as well and switch towards Corruptors as soon as I see that there are too many Liberators. So I'm not just pushing up here. I'm not just trying to end the game here. I'm also trying to figure out how much he's already committed into killing or into making any kind of air units. Now, one way to slow a Terran player down from getting those Liberators later on into the game because of the switch into Ultralisk is by simply using the Corruptors or Mutalisk that you already had to snipe down the Metavex. And as soon as you snipe down the Metavex, obviously he's going to have to replace those or, you know, just not be very safe with his ground army anymore at which point you can clean everything up with zerkling so like there's a cool dynamic happening in zerk versus terran right now where there are countless different options in army compositions there are different ways to add on different kinds of units and um, i'm actually having a blast once games do get to this stage now i end up killing a lot of scvs here uh, 17 worker kills already going down i am getting slightly ahead right now in the supply counts as well but you gotta keep in mind mules are extremely powerful and while i may be able to do a little more damage generally speaking ending off a terran player like this is not really gonna happen so what i've decided to do instead is put down the um plus three plus three upgrades the adrenal glands upgrade and very shortly you will see me put down the um ultralisk cavern as well all the while spreading creep very very poorly now that is one thing um that you already have or that you also have in zerk versus terran so at this point i am getting plus three plus three i'm getting my ultralisk cavern i'm getting adrenal glands and i will be getting the chitinous plating upgrade for the ultralisk as well while this is going on, I am basically saying to my Terran opponent, okay, I have just spent like a thousand resources, um, both in minerals and in gas, to try and get my army up that will be very, pretty much unstoppable in about three or, or two minutes from now, right? Like, these upgrades take a very, very long amount of time. I mean, how long does this take? Uh, 157 seconds, so about three minutes before me, or between me spending the resources and between um, me actually getting the benefit of those resources, right? So... I'm basically saying at this point, okay, if you're going to attack right now, I'm likely going to be in trouble. So I scout around, I see that he has a fort base. I'm not too happy about that, but I also know that that means he's likely not going to be pushing anytime soon. Um, and he's likely waiting for his own plus three, plus three. But I'm basically trying to spend a lot of resources right now into an army that I don't really have. And you can see my opponent is already going to start pushing ahead in the supply count because of that. Um, and that is sort of a cool dynamic as well. There is like, even though you have a very powerful mid game and even though you have a very powerful late game as Zork as well, there are these timings in between that are extremely good for Terran players to abuse. And my opponent is indeed going to start moving out right now. And this push right here is actually the scariest of scariest ones. Um, I don't know if this was just luck by him. I highly doubt it because the guy is very good at the game. Um, but he is aware that I just spent a ton of resources most likely by scanning in my main base. Um, on all of these things that I'm not going to be able to use for a little while. And I actually feel a little worried right now because my Ultras aren't out yet. I have a bunch of Queens out and I will be able to transfuse the units, but my upgrades aren't done. Trying to buy time here. Plus three, plus three is about a half minute or so from completing right now. And if I can buy time for that, that is great. Um, so that is all I'm trying to do. I am trying to be as patient as possible. Make sure that I get my upgrades done before engaging this army. Because once I get those done, I will be able to absolutely murder this army. However, my opponent has already figured out that I am indeed going to be going for Ultralisk. And he's following it up with his own Liberators. Now, Liberators are one of those units that once you get a lot of them, they will basically be unstoppable. And that is something to keep in mind here as well. So plus three attack. Uh, we'll be finishing up very shortly. Plus three armor just finished up as well. Gonna be morphing in a couple more Bane Links. And I'm gonna make sure that my Ultralisk are engaging head on. Now you will be able to see very shortly how much damage Liberators can do. And I know that I'm pretty far ahead as soon as those upgrades finish. But he still will be able to do... Well, we see the Roller Skates right there again on the Liber or on the Ultralisk. But you will see very quickly how much damage these units do do. And I'm trying to move forward right here. Get them out of the range of... Of those liberator shots but my opponent is still doing so much damage to my army i know that i am basically shoving all in right here if i don't do crippling amounts of damage here i will be behind and that is the risk that you take in zerk turn even though i did a ton of damage earlier um, the fact of the matter is that he has a fort base up i won't be able to deal with that at all and the corruptors are gonna be um, you know, needed in bigger numbers if I do want to clean this up. Honestly, what I should be doing right now is adding in more Zerklings, adding in more Corruptors, and, like, switch out of the Ultralisk already. I think I should just be getting the Great Aspire instead and switch into that, and I think that would be the default switch in the late game um, for Zerg players. Now that I've cleaned up all of the Liberators, though, with the Corruptors that I had, I will be able to do a ton of damage with the Ultralisk that I got. Um, and... 
I wouldn't be surprised though if later on into Zerg versus Terran, you will see your opponent go for, or like the Terran opponent go for like massive Liberator play. Then the Zerg switch into a crazy amount of Corruptors to deal with those Liberators. Then the Ground Army obviously killing up the Corruptors. And then the Zerg switching into things like uh, Brute Lords and whatnot. Now, obviously, I would have to start upgrading those already. So the meta in Zerg versus Terran is looking very, very promising. I would not be surprised if this is going to be one of the sickest matchups in Zerg versus Terran. And I hope to, you know, maybe have enlightened your day a little bit on the potential um, of Zerg vs. Terran in the future. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button down below as well, so you'll get a notification when I upload another StarCraft 2 video. And I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, and I will see you in the next one.